The next type of check mating motif I will discuss is one that happens along the open files, the open lines. Um, now, the most common occurrence for this happening is that there's usually a sacrifice against the castle king. Um, in this case, it looks like that black white has actually sacrificed two pieces. Um, I've actually taken this from a Grandmaster game. And so white has, t has sacrificed two pieces in order to get the black king very open. And it is very open indeed. So, at the moment, it's only the Queen that's down there attacking, um, but it's quite useful that black so um, pieces are quite far over this Queen side and not so much able to uh, defend. Um, but at the moment, White's only got one attacking um, piece over this side, so he needs to bring over other pieces. He's only got two rooks left. So, we do what is known as a rook lift in chess. A rook lift is where we want to swing the rook across to the other side. So, we go up and around as we do this. Now, this is a pretty strong idea here. And after rook e5 in the game, black actually resigned. Um, in view of the fact that white is going to play now rook g5 and complete this rook lift and there's actually nothing that um, black can do to defend. For example, if he tried to defend um, this seventh rank because um, white's threat to play rook g5 and then lawnmower him over to the other side by playing queen h6. So if black was, for example, to play rook d7, it still would not help because after rook g5 and... Um, say king h7 then white has a choice of two checkmates um he can play queen g6 sort of classic um, open file type of checkmate and then king h8 and rook h7 um rook h5 check sorry then after rook h7 you play rook takes h7 and this is checkmate again like the lawnmower style thing but on open files and doing it vertically um the quicker checkmate there was the option of playing rook h5 and then after king here you've got rook h8 which is another type of checkmating pattern here but um, the other way shows you typically how to do it on the open files so instead of that I mean he could play exactly the same thing with queen um, c7 doesn't make a difference he do exactly the same thing rook check um, queen check rook and then just because it's the queen blocking doesn't make any difference um, and counter attacking doesn't help I mean you could play rook f8. Um, this still doesn't help at all because after queen g6 check this time, you go king h8 and it's totally not be able to defend. Um, and so this is why after rook e5 was played in the game, um, black just resigned. And it just shows that material's not everything in chess. White has sacrificed two pieces here um, in order to get this position because the king is absolutely helpless um, when there's such open files directed at his king and you've got queen and rooks involved in both of those files. Um, another example here, taken from yet another Grandmaster game. Um, and it doesn't look so open now. Um, White's clearly got some sort of um, advantage here for the fact that he's got his rooks pointing um, and in the enemy's territory, but it still looks a bit risky. And also, Black's got her uh, their pieces doubled up along this file, ready to come down here. But the difference is, White doesn't have a weak back rank because he can al always come back with the bishop here and block. So it's actually White to play here, and White's got quite a deadly blow of queen takes h6 check. Now, if the bishop were to take, then rook takes h6 is checkmate. Again, you can see the power of the two rooks on these open files. Um, and should black not take it and instead move to um, g8, then, well, you've got a choice you can play. Rook takes g7 checkmate to show the open lines again and the use of both of those rook and the queen on the open files. So it's really, really um, deadly that um, the open, the files opposite the king become open because if a rooks and queen go, go on those files and control them, then the, de the defending king could be in serious danger.